Hello, Klaus here and welcome back to the channel for another video. It is so lovely to have you back here at the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do this thing. Yeah, the anamorphic look and how to do that in post. I know the best way to make an anamorphic look is, of course, to shoot anamorphic with pretty expensive anamorphic lenses, but like a lot of other filmmakers, we do not have too much money all the time and sometimes we have to fake it a bit. So this is how you can make that effect inside of DaVinci Resolve using a couple of notes and some tweaks here and there and, um, and that's pretty okay as well. Okay, let's get right to it. But before we get right to it, if you want to see other of my gear recommendations, please look down in the description below. And um, also, I'm going to do a short little video sequence and upload that uh, in an anamorphic look. So you can actually have a look at how that looks when you upload it and stuff like that. So the link for that will be down in the description as well. Anyway, let's get right to it. Okay, so here we are in the Vinci Resolve and today we're going to work with this little clip here. And we're trying to get this to look some kind of um, anamorphic. So uh, let's get right to it. Let's go to the color tab. And what I actually have here in the color tab, I'll just show you very quickly, is I have um, have a basic grade and have an, um, a blue sky adjustment. I'm just going to quickly disable those. And I am using the Blackmagic micro panel so I have buttons to disable, which is super handy. So anyway, anyway, let's have a look here. This is our grade. This is shot in Blackmagic RAW on the Ursa Pro 4.6K. And uh, this is our image. And then I have, a, of course, a basic correction to that, which is this correction. And then I'm doing something with the blue sky like so. So this is our clip. And now we want to make this look a little bit um, anamorphic. So let's uh, start by going up to the timeline here and put output blanking. And um, 240 should be pretty much like anamorphic. So um, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. And uh, I hope you will join us back again next time. I'm just kidding. That was just the first step. And we, we are going to... I'm going to show you later on how to export this out so we are not exporting with these black bars because there's no need to uh, in these times. Sometimes it's okay to do it like this. This is just for reference so it's easier to see what we're doing. So here we have our clip and uh, again we had our color grade here and I want to actually I want to have less or more space to work with. So I'm just going to select the two first notes here and then I am going to create a compound note. So the two notes will be one. This is my grade. And I'll just... You can also uh, show the compound note if you want to do something like that, just to let you know you can do that and then double click to come back. Okay. And then I am just going to note this as color. great okay so now we want to to add something into this because I mean this is shot on a modern lens and modern lenses are pretty sharp and the glass is it's not the um, there's no imperfections in the glass more or less and that's what is very great about uh, shooting with old lenses is that um, we have these imperfections which makes your footage look more alive at least that's in my opinion so i am shooting a lot of uh, or with a lot of um, vintage lenses these days but um, this shot was shot on the sam yang 35 millimeter so anyway let's uh, try to make this look a little bit more imperfect so the first thing i want to do is I want to go to the color and I'm going to go into notes and I'm going to add a splitter combiner node. And this is what a splitter combiner node is, this strange looking thing we have here. And what that is, is it's just the red channel, the green channel and the blue channel divided into separate channels. So let's just uh, fastly 
note this as the top one is the red. I'll just write red. The next one is the blue, well, the green. Green, and the last one is, the, of course, the blue channel. Like so. Here we have the red, green, and blue. Okay. So let's uh, try to make some imperfections in this shot by mm, changing stuff in the, either the red, the green, or the blue channel. In this case, I'll use the red. And then I'm going to go to my input sizing, and I'm going to change this into uh, note sizing. Uh, per default, it's as... Uh, as input sizing but I'll change this to note sizing just and what we can do now is we can then for instance pan the red channel and we can now make this kind of um, you know like 80s effect you ha we had this a lot in the 80s and on, on the films and uh, these imperfections the 80s were um, a, a decade of imperfections in glass and uh, style and fashion uh, and you gotta love it for that. Um, anyway, so now I have shifted the red color just a little bit. If we go up here, and I am just going to disable this note, you can see it. It's not. It's not a very much, but it is a little. Just making it less perfect. And of course, we could do it in the the other channels as well, but. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave it into the red channel. You can mess around with this as much as you want. It's just nice to know you can do that. And then I am just going to um, highlight all of this, and I am going to do a, another compound cl note or compound clip. Okay, so let's call this. We'll call this um, red. Red fix. It's not a fix, but anyway. So now we have this imperfections in all of our images. But if we look at a vintage lens, for instance, you would notice that a vintage lens is usually sharp in the middle and um, and soft out in the corners, and so that maybe also means that our imperfections would not be in the entire glass, but out in the corners. So to make that effect, we are just going to go into our windows here and we're just going to add a circular window and then, then I'm just going to make a shape here and then we're just going to feather that a bunch something like that and now we have this selected and we just push this button here and now it's applied to everything outside so let's zoom in a bit here so you can actually see what we're doing. And then again, I am going to disable the effect and we're going to zoom in. Oh, if you can see it, it is not very much, but it's there. We zoom in a ton. <laughs> so here we have it disabled and here we are going to. So you can see it's just a little thing and it's just a small little detail in a larger picture, but. Uh, I like it. Okay, so let's continue. First off, I am going to do a new note, Control S, to do a new note, and then I'm going to the open effects, and here I am going to type in lens, and I'm going to take the lens distortion, and I'm going to add that into that note. Okay, so now we have this lens distortion. So first off, I am going to distort this out. I'm going to stretch this out so it fill the whole frame. And then I can do a little more with the positions. If you see here, I can make it a little more stretchy, a little more closer. I mean, you can you can do a lot here, but uh, don't go too crazy. So now we have this kind of an image here. And the, of course, if we now um, go up to timeline and go to output blanking, and we're going to reset that. Now we have this image and. Um, and this is still in the aspect ratio of uh, 16 by 9. And we want to change that a bit. So let's um, go into our wrench here. And we are going to go to the master settings. And in our timeline resolutions, 
I'm just going to change the numbers and you can do a lot of math and there's a lot of videos about um, the different sizes and what the settings should be online so you can check that out somewhere. I just know that um, for 1080 clip which this is uh, the resolution for that would be 1920 by 800 so I'm going to change that and we're just going to push save and now we have this image with a lot of square bars around and we don't want that so we'll go again by pushing the wrench and then we are going to go to image scaling and in the input scaling we are going to change it from scaling tire to scale full frame with crop and there we go so here we have the anamorphic look and there's no black bars or anything so if we look at this let's go back in the edit page just go back at the edit page here so here we have the the clip we're working with pretty good pretty don't need so this is like the anamorphic uh, size of the image now and now we are actually having the full image and not we're not cropping anything off the top and bottom so when we do want to deliver this we'll just go to the deliver tab and um, and then we're just going to do the same thing we're just going to make the resolution uh, custom and we're just going to change this to 800 like so so now we when we are exporting this we're exporting this without the black bars and uh, on places like youtube or whatever uh, it will automatically automatically give us those black bars back so um, i'll i'll upload a short little video where this technique is used for the uh, rendering and you can check that down in the description below Anyway, I do hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, give the video a like, share it with your friends if you think it will help them out. And if you want to be notified every time there's another video on the channel, please hit that bell icon down in the corner. Until next time, keep filming, keep learning, and keep sharing.